<laughs> Thank you for a fourteen dollars super chat from Derek Drucher. Question for you: What's the proper method of testing internal resistance? Been testing several batteries. Um, uh, okay. The first thing you have to do when you test internal resistance is the batteries have to be at the same voltage. The internal resistance changes when the voltage changes. So, what I would do is I would fully charge the batteries so they're at 4.2 volts. But some people do test them at 3.8 volts, but they have to be at a consistent voltage or the numbers you're seeing don't mean anything. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, yeah, other than that, same same state of charge, same charge voltage, and then temperature is the other thing. So if there's if one is the warmer they are, the lower their internal resistance. Uh, that's that's those are good methods for testing internal resistance. And then your other question is: Is ten a good number? I don't know. It depends on the size of the pack. Larger packs have lower internal resistance. So without knowing the milliamp hours and the C rating of the pack, we don't know whether the internal resistance is a good or a bad number. But what you can do is you test the batteries and then you write down 1500 milliamp hour battery, internal resistance, 8, 8, 9, 10, 8, 11, whatever. You write it down and you just make a database or a spreadsheet with internal resistance for batteries of different sizes and then you can have information about what a good and a bad internal resistance is. What's the actual real way to test internal resistance? There's no defined standard without argument or disagreements. Um, like internal resistance, there, there, there's absolutely a way to test internal resistance. Um, whether a device is accurately measuring internal resistance is another story. So the, the sort of there's first of all, there's two ways to measure internal resistance, and one is with an AC signal and one's with a DC signal. The DC one is more common and is cheaper and easier to use to do. And basically the way it works is you you draw a current from the battery, and you measure the voltage drop when you draw the current, and then you can calculate the internal resistance. The problem is that you have to measure the current flow very precisely to measure the voltage drop, and uh, accurately calibrating current sensors is difficult to do. It's, it's not difficult, but doing it in a mass production uh, situation is time consuming, and a lot of times the, the cheap tools that we use to measure internal resistance aren't well calibrated. And that's why they'll give super different answers. Um, if you really want to measure internal resistance, I highly recommend checking out an AC internal resistance meter. And these are not cheap, but they have some advantages compared to a DC internal resistance, which is what your charger is doing when it measures internal resistance. Um, an AC internal resistance meter. Uh, I don't know if this is a good one. This is just one that I found on the internet. You're ideally going to want to look for one that's like... You want, can do 18650 cells. They'll sometimes come with a cradle for 18650 cells. Um, an AC internal resistance meter is... One thing that it's going to do is it is not going to depend... Uh, it's not going to take into account the uh, like the the length of the battery leads. It'll it'll it, that doesn't affect the AC internal resistance, and so you'll get more consistent measurements. Um, does it is it independent of the battery voltage? I I want to say that AC internal resistance is independent of the battery voltage, so they don't all have to be at the same state of charge. I'm not a hundred percent sure that's accurate. I think that might be wrong. There are other advantages to AC internal resistance that are I, I actually uh, have forgotten them. Uh, I used to know them, and now I, as I try to remember them, they're not coming to me, so I'll just shut up. But um, the right thing to do would be to spend a little bit of money on a good AC internal resistance meter, and that'll give you more consistent results than a DC internal resistance meter. <laughs> 